Freddy the Frog and the Thump in the Night, written by Sharon Birch, illustrated by Tiffany Harris, adapted into storybook text by Debbie Watley. This is Freddy. Freddy loved to sing. Not the usual croaking noises that frogs make, but songs like Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. And Froggy went a court and he did ride a huh. Froggy went a court and he did ride a huh. Music was very alive where Freddy lived because Freddy lived on the far north side of Treble Clef Island. This map of Treble Clef Island is called a staff. Freddy and his parents lived where the top line is. They lived in a deep, tall forest filled with ferns and fireflies. Usually the forest was a great place for a frog to live, but one very hot summer no rain fell. All the tasty bugs buzzed away to find cooler places. Freddy's parents knew they had to find bugs or the family would starve. It was too dangerous for Freddy to travel with them, so he had to stay at home. This was the first time they had left Freddy alone overnight. With farewell hugs and kisses, Freddy's mom and dad started on their journey to find food without their son. At first, Freddy felt scared and lonely. What if a burglar broke into my house? He thought. Or what if I can't figure out how to toast my toaster waffle? Or what if... Wait! I can do whatever I want! No one will tell me to take out the trash or turn down my music. Freddy grinned. This could be great! He hopped over to the stereo and pumped up the music so loud the leaves on his treehouse started to shake wildly. Freddy finally tuckered out. He flopped into bed and did not bother to take a bath or brush his gums. Suddenly, in the middle of the night, a loud thumping noise jolted Freddy out of his sleep. Thump! 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 Oh no! Someone's coming to get me! Freddy's heart thumped now. Terrified, Freddy huddled under his blanket. Please go away! Please go away! He whimpered, but it didn't. Thump! 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 All night it thumped. As dawn peeked through the windows, Freddy could not stand it anymore. Thump! 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 He felt a bit curious. He felt a little brave. Slowly, Freddy crept to the front door. The sound grew even louder when he opened the door. Thump! 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 What is it? Freddy wondered. The sound echoed from across the river. The Crocodile River flowed through the middle of Treble Clef Island, and frog-eating crocodiles swam in it and basked on the sandy banks. Yikes! How can I get across without becoming breakfast? He began to climb down the tree. Freddy paused and peered across the river. He had heard stories about humongous gray monsters that lived beyond Crocodile River. In the distance, he saw a gray lump moving back and forth. Freddy had heard the gray monsters could squish frogs in a single step. Just then, he saw what he had been looking for, a bridge. Made from huge logs and ropes, it swayed and creaked in the breeze. Freddy scurried down the tree. He gulped. I must be brave, he thought. The little green frog hopped to the bridge. Somehow, he got on the swinging thing. Freddy quickly grabbed hold of the rope railing to keep from bouncing into Crocodile River. Between the logs, he could see the water swirling far below him. Thump! 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 The bridge shook violently with every thump. Hang on, Freddy! He told himself. Freddy knew he should not look down anymore. He fixed his eyes on the other side of the river, where acres of azaleas covered the ground. As far as he could see, the pink flowers grew beside the river like a soft, rippling ribbon. As he struggled to the end of the moving bridge, the thumping grew even louder. Each terrible thump bounced Freddy off his feet. Then he saw it. An enormous monster was walking away from him on huge, thumping feet. It made the earth shake. 
The monster turned around. It saw Freddy. It charged at Freddy. Thump, 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 thump. Freddy lost his footing. Dangling from the rope, Freddy froze in fear. The monster swung its long nose, swished it in the air, captured Freddy, and lifted him level with its beady black eyes. Ah! Screamed Freddy. Hey there, said the monster. Are you okay? Don't eat me, please, Freddy pleaded. Phew, Freddy thought. His breath smells like peanuts. Why would I want to eat you? I don't eat anything that can talk, the monster said. I eat leaves and grass and peanut butter. You, 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 you do? Freddy asked. Phew, I heard that you great monsters squish frogs, and I thought you'd squish me and eat me. Yeah? I'm an elephant. My name is Eli. I, I'm Freddy. Are you sure you're not a monster? Freddy stammered and then asked indignantly. Hey, why are you making so much noise? My mom and dad had to leave to search for food and I felt all alone. I couldn't sleep so I just kept walking back and forth. Eli confessed. Wow, my parents are searching for food too! exclaimed Freddy. Then with a sheepish grin, Freddy admitted. Your thumping scared me to death! Sorry, Eli said. Suddenly, his eyes lit up and he asked, Hey, do you want to stay and play with me? Freddy stayed at Eli's home all day. They played hide and seek in the azaleas and checkers in Eli's room. Freddy taught Eli his favorite songs and Eli taught Freddy how to do the put hokey pokey. Put your left leg in, put your left leg out, put your left leg in and you shake it all about. That evening, Freddy hopped happily back to his home. Just as he reached his tree, his parents returned with their bags full of yummy bugs. At dinner, he told them all about his new friend Eli, the elephant, who was not a monster, even if he was humongous. The next morning, Freddy and his parents hopped across the bridge to meet Eli. Eli's parents had successfully returned with food. The elephants invited the frogs to a picnic under the elm trees near their home. They feasted and shared stories. The two families quickly became the best of friends. One day, Freddy was riding on top of Eli's head, gazing down at the azaleas. What are you thinking about, Freddy? Eli asked. I get awfully lonely when my mom and dad go away to find bugs, Freddy said. I'm glad I can play with you during the day. I don't like being by myself. Eli thought for a while. What if we could stay together the whole time our parents have to be away? That would be great, replied Freddy. But you are too big to sleep in my room. Freddy slumped back down. The two friends stood in the flowers thinking. I have an idea, Freddy exclaimed. We could build you a hut right next to our tree house. You can stay with me when your parents have to leave. Great thinking, replied Eli. And you can sleep at my place when your parents search for bugs. What if you roll over in your sleep and squish me? Freddy asked worriedly. Oh, that wouldn't be good, Eli said. They both thought some more. Then Eli smiled. I know. We could build a tree house right next to my hut. Perfect, grinned Freddy. Let's go ask our parents. For the rest of that hot summer and into the fall, Freddy and Eli's parents took turns going on trips, and the boys played together and stayed together. All too soon, winter came to the island blowing chilly breezes. Freddy's gums chattered too much for him to sing. It's time for us to hibernate, Freddy said his mom. Freddy didn't want to, but he just could not stop shivering. So, with a sad heart, Freddy helped his parents dig down deep in the mud of the riverbank. They covered themselves in mud blankets and slept warm and toasty all winter. Freddy dreamed of playing with Eli and all the fun things they would do when spring came. When the azaleas began to bloom in the spring, Eli knew it was time. 
Each day he anxiously waited on the opposite river bank for Freddy to wake up and crawl out of the mud. One warm afternoon, Freddy opened his sleepy eyes eager to see his elephant friend. He wriggled out of the mud, stretched his legs, and looked all around for Eli. After sleeping so long, his froggy mind did not think straight. He spotted Eli on the other side of the river. Eli! He yelled, and without another thought, he jumped over the river. Well, almost. Eli saw Freddy's leap and screamed, Freddy, no! Too late. In midair, Freddy realized he would not make it. Down, down he fell, straight into the open jaws of a crocodile. Gulp? What a surprise for the crocodile. Enjoying a big yawn in the warm, lazy <laughs> afternoon, she never saw Freddy coming. But she sure felt him plop onto her tongue and slide down her throat. Eli thumped away as fast as he could to find help. Terrified, Freddy hopped and flopped inside the belly of the crocodile. When Eli returned with his dad to the river, there sat the crocodile with a bad case of hiccups. Eli and his father pried open her mouth with a large stick. Oh, what are you doing? moaned the croc. She was shocked. No one had ever tried to get in her mouth before. Eli shouted, Now! And his father stomped on the crocodile's tail. Flip! Freddy shot out of the crocodile's mouth. Poor Freddy looked shaken and more green than usual, but he came out unhurt since the crocodile had swallowed him whole. What an adventure! Eli and Freddy shared many adventures that summer, but none as scary and dangerous as the crocodile encounter. They played lots of hide-and-seek in the azaleas. They also liked to listen to their favorite music while dancing on Eli's bed. And although their parents did not have to take trips to find bugs and peanuts that summer, Freddie and Eli still spent many nights sleeping over at their vacation homes. Do you remember what or who is at each place on the staff? Turn the page to find the answers. Freddy's home. Eli's home. Freddy's vacation home. Eli's vacation home. Crocodile River. Azaleas.